So I want to wrap this up by trying to bring it back to something simple. So we've been doing a lot with, okay, the idea is you find the max and min, you find the extreme values of a function by looking at the critical points and the end points. All right, that's the long and short of it. Now let's come back to, let's go back to algebra two. In algebra two, you'd be given a function like this and somebody says graph it, right? Graph that. So uh, you would say, okay, well, first I'll factor it. So that's x times x squared minus 4. So it's x times x minus 2 times x plus 2. So I can graph it by plotting the x-intercepts at negative 2, 0, and 2. And then uh, I can look at the end behavior. It's a positive cubic. So it goes like this. And then well, the other thing that we would say at algebra 2 is, but don't assume that these maxima are at negative one and one. They're not, okay? Where are the maxima? That's what we can now answer is where are the max and the min, right? So we can just say, all right, well, y prime is equal to three x squared minus four. So we just set that equal to zero and that's gonna tell us where our max and min are. So three x squared equals four, uh, x squared equals four thirds, x equals plus or minus 2 over the square root 3, also known as plus or minus 2 square root 3 over 3. All right, so uh, let's just go ahead and get decimals for that this time. Um, what is 2 uh, square root of 3 divided by 3? All right, it's 1.155 to take three decimal places, 1.555. So it's approximately plus or minus 1.555. And generally these maxima and minima are gonna be at irrational values. You kinda kinda see how when we do this derivative, we're gonna get a, an equation that's not necessarily gonna have rational solutions if this one did. I mean, that when it does, it doesn't, it's a sort of complicated question. But anyway, 1.55. 2 square root 3 over 3. That's where the max and min are. And negative 2 square root 3 over 3 and positive 2 square root 3 over 3. And if we want to know how high that goes, of course, we just take this number and put it into x cubed minus 4x. So we could do um, that number. So let's go, um, we can go like uh, shift answer uh, cubed, to the, so to the third power, um, to the power of 3, um, minus four times, I don't know if I need the times here, but I'm just gonna put it anyway, four times, whatever my answer was, all right? And I get negative 3.079. That's where the min is, negative 3.079. So now I know this point is approximately 1.55, negative 3.079. And this point, since this is an odd function, it has to be symmetric with respect to the origin. So this point over here has to be negative 1.555, positive 3.079, all right? So that's just like sort of a simple way of looking at the idea of finding the maxima and minima, like the really short version of it is, set the derivative equal to zero. And you can find the max and mins that way, okay? But in this case, the reason that we knew that the negative one was the min and the positive one was the max is this is a cubic and I already know a lot about this graph. So in so the examples that you have in the homework, you're going to see graphs that you don't already know something about. They're not polynomials. So that's why you have to like look at the endpoints, look at the first derivative test. All right, this problem also didn't have endpoints. If I, if I said, I want to know the maximum and minimum on the interval from negative one to three, okay, then the maximum value might be over here and the minimum value would be here. Right, but that's not the question I have here. Okay, so there you go. Um, your homework, as we said before, was a um, certain number of problems that are written somewhere um, for your um, entertainment purposes. Um, right here, page 193, number one through 27 odd. That's your homework on this. Enjoy, schedule me for flex if you get stuck.